In this video, I'd like to show you how to set up your Autodesk graphic document for print output. So if you'd like to create business cards using Autodesk graphic, this video is going to show you how to make sure when you send it to a professional printer, everything's ready to go. I'll start by creating a new document. Now a standard business card is three and a half inches. So I'll put in 3.5 by two inches high. I'll also change my color mode to CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So I'll choose CMYK as my color mode and create a new document. Now when sending to a professional printer, if you want full bleed, for example, if you wanted a photograph to go from one edge to the other without any white space showing, you're going to want to add bleed into your document. So in the canvas settings, I can just add an eighth inch bleed to either side of my document. So 3.5 becomes 3.75 and 2 becomes 2.25. That gives me an eighth inch on every side. Command R will bring up my rulers and I can also set up my grid to an eighth inch. So my X spacing I'll put in 0.125 and my Y spacing 0.125. My subdivisions I'll leave at one and I'll turn on show grid and snap to grid. Now I can give myself some guides. So I know that I created my document with an eighth inch bleed or added that eighth inch bleed. So now what I'm doing is dragging guides out from the rulers to give myself a visual representation of where the bleed is or where this card is going to get trimmed after being printed. I also might want to add in some guides just to give myself a little bit of a margin because I don't want things to be too close to the edge. I typically give myself another eighth of an inch from the trim guides. This will let me know how close I can get to the edge and still give some breathing room from where it's going to be cut. So setting that up in my guides just gives me that visual reference. From here I could turn off my grid and just use those guides. I can also get rid of my rulers just to free up some screen real estate and continue working on this business card. I'm going to create a very generic card just so you can see how this works. What I like to do is use my layers panel to separate my front and my back. So I already have one layer in here and I can rename it front. I'll create a new layer, set it below here and call it back. Now these are different layers and you can have different objects assigned to different layers. Imagine it as two pieces of paper or in this case two sides of the same piece of paper. I prefer creating these in the same document. It's really really handy once you get a design going, you can just turn on and off the eyeball of the layer and give yourself an instant visual reference of what both sides are going to look like. The first thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle just for my background. So I'll create a rectangle that snaps to the borders of my canvas. And from here I could change the fill color. And I'm going to put it on the CMYK color sliders. This will help me really dial in a color that can be reproduced by professional printers. So I'll just add in some cyan, maybe a little bit of black. And if you have CMYK colors for your client or for your own brand, you can dial in those percentages right here in this CMYK color picker. Now this could be a gradient or solid color. I'm just going to leave it as a solid color. I'll switch to my type tool and just put in some generic information. I want my text to be white. And I'll create a new text box for additional information. Once I have a text style that I like and I want to reuse, I can just select it and option drag, holding option, drag a duplicate and make my changes from there. From my symbols library, I can grab a few icons just to help indicate the information that somebody might want to look at. I'll grab the phone and the envelope for email.
Using groups can really help you organize things, as well as naming your objects or groups in the Layers panel. If I don't want to constantly be selecting something like the background shape here, I can just lock it in the Layers panel or use Command-L. That way I can select everything on top without moving that one around. I can quickly hide the guides by pressing Command and Semicolon. That just gives me a clear view of what I'm actually going to be looking at. Here I've used just one of the built-in icons that comes with Autodesk graphic shape libraries to represent the business logo. Now this could be your own logo or your client's logo or something that you've created with Autodesk graphic. Now I'm going to hide this side of the card, which gives me a clean blank document ready for the other side. I could also copy and paste some of the elements from one side to the other by using command shift V you can paste those elements in place so they'll be exactly in the same position just on the other side of your card. So that's what I've done here with the background shape. I'm going to lock that one as well. Now I can build up the other side of my card. From here, I can export this command option E or under file, export, and save it as a PDF that's ready to be emailed or sent off to the printer of your choice. You could also save out each side as a JPEG or PNG image. You could even save a PSD, which will include all of your objects on separate layers. In your export window, you can specify the image resolution. You should ask your printer what their preference is for final file output. Autodesk Graphic is great for creating documents that are ready for professional print. I hope you give it a try and use some of these tips to set up your documents to get the best results. Thanks for watching.